Well, that's good that you guys know each other and we're live. How's it going, boys? Good, good morning, morning, guys. We've got Sonny, swimsuit guy, all the way from England, and uh, Jonathan Coppolo. How are you, my friend? Good, good. How are you? Now, you're uh, coming from Israel, right? Yeah, now in Israel. Just got back from Marseille. Yeah. What were you doing in Marseille, man? Um, I coach uh, Meron Trudy. He won, he won uh, Lausanne mm. Swim Cup. Mm. See that, Sonny? We got the coach. That, uh... Yeah, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> the guy that won... So he's Again. been training in uh, Marseille, like it's a cooperation between uh, Israel and Marseille, the, mm -hmm. the team there. So I just went to visit him for a week. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now tell me, what's the state of swimming in Israel? Tell, tell me, what's the update on Israel, Israeli swimming? Well, it's hard because it got much better since David Marsh uh, joined the, the program. Like he's our consultant. Mm -hmm. He's been with us for five years now. Wow. Yeah, it's gotten much better, but he like he, encour he encourages a lot of swimmers to to go to the U.S. to the collegiate system, which is good, I think. But we don't produce a lot of uh, or enough swimmers at home. Yeah, but you know, everyone they, when they turn eighteen, you go to the army in Israel. So when you turn twenty or twenty-one, you go to the to the U.S. Right. Basically, no one stays in Israel. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, it's uh, you you got your back against the wall with the with the army. You know, the women yeah. the women have to do two years and the men three. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, and then by the time they get out, they're a little bit more developed and they think, well, I want to go and study abroad now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes it's not related to swimming at all. Like they just want to get a scholarship and study. Yeah, and swim for fun, basically. Now, if they wanted to stay in Israel, what are their options? With swimming and uh, school, none. None? Wow. None. Nothing. So no, no school will support swimming in Israel? No. Like school is a full-time job in Israel. Now, if they don't want to, if they want to be a swimmer full-time, then they just have to dedicate their life to swimming then? Yeah. Basically, yeah. And they don't get, get paid enough to do it. Uh, is, so there, is there, nice. is there so any very, funding? Yeah, but I mean, very little. Like, the best swimmer in Israel gets around twenty five hundred dollars a month from the federation or from the Olympic Committee. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it makes it tough, eh? Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, man, it's good to have you. Lots of swimming going on around the world. Uh, we had our first long course meet in the U.S. Really, where. Uh, Man, what a lot of action over the weekend, huh? Hey? It was crazy. Um, it was really fast. I, I don't think pro series are generally that fast. Uh, I mean, they're obviously spread out over the, the year, so the earlier ones are a bit slower, the later ones are a bit faster. But there was a lot of records, which means it was faster than usual. But most of all, I was just really impressed by uh, ASU in, in general. ASU, they own swimming this weekend, right? Bob Bowman and his, his, his assistant coaches, Herbie. Um, I forgot the other guy's name. No offense. Sorry. Um, but ASU killed it, right? Like, and I don't just mean winning pack 12s in the yards, but Chase Kalish, he's swimming PBs. Um, mm. He went like a sub two minute 200 backstroke. He went a 156.02 fly. He won the 2IM. Regan Smith went a 56.600 butterfly. Even wow. she looked shocked at, that one, shocked at that one. I mean, like, this is the 200 backstroke world record holder going at a time in the 100 butterfly that will find where every international meet ever. Mm. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, they had they had a weekend, hey? All of them. Uh, Rachel Stratton Mills, by the way, is uh, is um the head uh, female assistant out <laughs> at ASU, maybe the associate head coach. Um but yeah, I mean they're they're killing it. It seems like they've got the program in the right place and Bob has surrounded himself with the right people and he's giving them enough rope to coach and allow groups to thrive. And so it sounds like the, the whole environment out there is really clicking, right? Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah, have you been out to ASU, Johnny? No, but I have uh, like a swimmer from my club. He's in Stanford now. So okay. he's he told me everything about Pac-12 now. Right. And the crazy environment there. No. Yeah. 
Yeah. Man, Pac Pac twelve, like I guess I guess it's a surprise. I mean it's the first time in program history. I don't think it's a surprise that anyone, you know, knew how good they could be and and how uh deep they were. You know, they've they've got a lot of great swimmers on that team. So but I still think it took everybody by surprise that actually went out and won it. I haven't yeah, talked to anyone on the inside, but I'd imagine that would be the case. I think that everyone thought that uh Cal will win. After they were not rested, not tapered for the dual meets, for everything, not wearing suits. But at the end, ASU did it. They did. You can take nothing away from them. And congratulations to the whole unit. Um, we're actually, I'm actually going to go live with Grant House this afternoon. So Grant, oh, we're going to check in with Grant. And he had a phenomenal meet. And he's, he's, he's kind of like the true leader of that group, I believe. He was the first true stud that, mm -hmm that went to ASU that committed there um, had some issues early on and figured them out and now is really leading that group. And I think he's the heart and soul of that program. So yeah, I'm excited to kind of interview him or talk to him this afternoon and see what's going on on the inside, get some inside word. But um, Sonny, just back to, let's go back to the, the tier pro series. Let's, let's maybe go through day by day. Cause it was, it was some interesting stuff each day and we, we got ourselves a new, uh, I don't know what you call it, but uh, the Slim Reaper. We got a we got ourselves a new a new person to follow. Who's this Slim Reaper? So day one saw uh, the men's hundred freestyle, the men's and women's hundred freestyle, and I think the heats. Everyone was a little shocked because there was a few forty eight points, which is you know that's pretty good in its own right. But most importantly, one was from a sixteen year old. He's a, uh, a dual native, so he's a U.S. and a German native. His name's Kai Winkler. He trains in Florida. He's in like a high school team. I, I forgot which one. They, they don't come natively to me, but yeah. and he's he's you know people know who he is. He was really good yards um, a few weeks ago. He was really good at World Juniors last year, but he went forty eight point eight at sixteen. It's a new uh, American national age group record. And he's like a really tall guy, really skinny frame. Uh, you know, a lot of resemblances to the likes of, you know, a Duncan Scott or a, a David Popovich. And he's got this beautiful freestyle, nice limp stroke, gallop stroke, um, and a great back end. He come back in like 25-0, 25-1. So mm. it's not 24-0 or anything David Popovich is doing, but he's not going 46 either. And he's also only 16. So, yeah, really, really impressive swim. Uh, Jonathan, did you watch the swim? No, I didn't see it. I'm, I just watched the results at the end. But I, I know, I think I saw him once in a yards meet, like a video of him on Instagram or something. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a kind of um, underdeveloped type uh, kid. Yeah, very skinny, very lean. And, and again, like I think this is kind of the same conversation we had when Popovich kind of hit the scene. You know, it was like we were, we were talking about him being skinny and lean, and but these this seems to be the way that to go these days. Uh, you know, a lot of guys uh, seem to be having success with the with this body type now, and um, it's very interesting. Yeah, he's he's put himself on the map, that's for sure, on the radar, and a lot of a lot of people talking about him now. You pop at forty eight at sixteen, um, you're going to turn some heads for sure. So, yeah, pretty interesting stuff, but. Uh, I mean, there was good swimming all around day one as well. You know, Katie, Katie Grimes is, again, swimming phenomenal. Um, and, you know, that that whole group uh, is just it's just an incredible group out there in Vegas as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. Potentially my favorite swimmer day one um, was Ilya Karun in the 200 Butterfly. Um, another Sandpiper in Nevada. Another great mm. young talent. I think he's 17. He might be 18 now. Canadian lad. But he wins the 200 fly, beating Trenton Julian, Chase Kalish, you know, some other fast guys. Last 50 was 29.6. And he went, his PB before the, the event, 156.8. He went 154.4, which, wow. you know, I don't need to tell you, is a, a stupidly fast time. Um, that was my swim of the day. And, you know, Summer McIntosh broke a world junior record, 205.0 in the two fly. Katie Grimes won the 400. The last 50, she went from fourth to first, beating Siobhan, Leah Smith, a few other great names. So there were some great swims, but my, my pick of the day had to be Ilya Kroon's 200 fly. Yeah, phenomenal swim. Um, yeah, it's just a lot, lot of stuff day one. Um, 
Yeah, Johnny, do you, do you know this? Ahmed guy? Abby, Abby Whitesell coming uh-huh. back 53 3. Mm-hmm. That's right. a, it's pretty decent. Yeah, 53 3 is a really good swim. You know, she's been in around that, that mark before, but to see her back, Dylan Carter 48 2. I mean, 48 2 yeah, is that's a record. really good swim. Poor Dylan. Yeah. Yeah, He's raining by himself. Yeah, exactly. But uh, but uh, half now he finally coming back and swimming. You know, he went three forty six zero. Yeah. That's yeah, that's yeah. quick too. Do you know him, Johnny? No, never met him. Yeah, he's I mean, he, he's been elusive. He ever since he won the gold in uh, Tokyo, I haven't haven't seen much of him. But uh, yeah, look at this thirteen year old. Yeah, Jersey Wahoo's pretty solid. <laughs> Can't be he's bad. All- there's always some girl that's going to be young and fast and popping something, but uh, <laughs> it's crazy how they do that. I don't know, but um, Siobhan, yeah, I mean, yeah, Siobhan hmm? Holly, yeah, was pretty good on day uh, on day one, the four or five. Mm. It's a national record for her. They were in training camp for six weeks in Israel, her and Tom. Oh, okay, really? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was yeah. going to say, did you did you Tom go and visit is basically, the Tom is basically now. I, I, I don't want to say the head coach of Israeli swimming, but kind of like he's the head coach for Worlds and Olympic Games for Israel. Oh, wow. That's a yeah. big appointment. Yeah, yeah. He was nominated like two months ago. Wow. Why why do they why they pick an outsider? Um, that's a hard question, but I think they just don't believe in the Israeli coaches right now. Johnny, when are you going to get a shot, man? What's happening here? This is your country. Uh, I hope after Paris, it will be. <laughs> that's 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 the goal. I mean, I'm still a young coach, so basically, that's I think that's why they don't pick me yet. Okay, so who who are the top coaches in Israel? Give me a couple of names. Uh, you probably know Leonid Kaufman. Uh huh. He was he was the head coach for twenty years. Okay. Until twenty sixteen. Mm-hmm. Who was the head coach? Um, my the head coach of my club. He just uh, recently got fired. His name is Hanan. He was the national team coach for, uh, like, assistant coach for a lot of years. So basically, it's a new generation in Israel. Like the old coaches are leaving, and like a new generation is coming up. Yeah, there are a lot of like, like 10, 12 pretty good coaches around the age of 30, 35. Well, that's you, man. Now. You're in there. You're in that mix. Yeah. It's good. I like how you get around and you you ask a lot of questions. You travel a lot and you seek new ideas and and then you kind of go and implement them into your own program. Which um, you know, you're you're a learner. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, well, that's good. Keep it up. Um, back to the action here. Let's talk about this uh, summer Macintosh. Uh, what what is anyone going to beat her in Paris? No, Sonny. No. When Summer can now go 154-1 in the 200 freestyle, that sort of like, I think, closes the door on everything. Like, she's my pick for the 400 now. I'm sorry, in Paris. Mm-hmm. I, I, she, she's beating Katie and Titmus in the 400 freestyle in Paris. Mm. Like, we don't need to know if she can come back. And if she can go out with 154 speed now, she, she's she's moving that event on again. I can just see it now. You know, you, you, know, you can tell... You can tell Anyone else have said that, but uh, Summer McIntosh, she can do it all. She can, she can win the two four am, the two four three, and uh, the two five. five. She can yeah. do five golds. Wow, yeah, she's yeah, she's agree. definitely a special talent. She's turning a lot of heads. I was getting text messages all weekend from uh, Australian coaches too. I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, definitely a lot of people taking notice of Summer McIntosh. You know? Yeah, for sure. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what about the 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 men's? What about the men's backstroke depth in America? How are we looking? Go on, it was go on, go on. the the hundred back was pretty good. I mean, fifty two going now in uh, Mar- beginning of March is pretty good for Hunter. Yeah. Yeah, Hunter's Hunter's definitely uh, a talent uh, out there in. Uh, yeah. Training out in Cal too, mm-hmm. you know? so yeah, and he's pretty solid. Like he swims fifty two almost all the time. So yeah, that's true. With his fifty speed, I would 
want to see a 51 from him. Like he's so fast at the 50. And for me, it's crazy that he doesn't swim 51. He's been 51. Yeah, he's been one once, uh, yeah. 51. World champs, he went 51. Oh, yeah, right. 51, eh? Okay. What was the story with Katie Ledecky out there? What what happened to her? She she had some good swims and then she had some off ones. What was going on? Do you think, Sonny? I don't really think she had any off swims. I I, I just think she entered a few events. And look, I, I I know Siobhan's situation a whole lot more. And Siobhan didn't race the hundred freestyle, for example. She wanted to give the four hundred a go, which you know John mentioned. She PB'd in it four oh five. But unfortunately, you know four oh five is not as world class as the time she could have probably put up in the hundred. I think she'd have you know. Been around what Abby went in the 100 and raced Abby really well. But Katie's done the same thing. She's done some main events. She's from the 200 freestyle. She's, you know, gave that a shot. And she's also raced the 4 a.m., which she won comfortably in 436. She's won, she's won the 200 fly, which was, by Katie's standards, really bad. 217, last in the final. It's But but look at her fly technique. It's It's not natural. It's not great. And... I doubt she's going to be going back to the drawing board thinking, oh, no, I've lost the 200 butterfly. Like, it doesn't matter. But her freestyle looked hot. 154 in the 200. She got beaten by Summer, but it's fast. Her 100 is really good. I think she comes second in the 100 freestyle. Like, yeah, 54 flat. That's I, pretty good. I, I don't think she's off at all. I think her freestyle looked brilliant, and she raced some medley and some butterfly. Like, uh, you know, she could have – if she'd swum the 400 freestyle, she would have won by – Eight seconds, six seconds, or whatever. Like, I don't. She's not not done the four hundred free because she thinks Katie Grimes is going to beat her. She's not raced the four hundred free because that's not what her plan is to do right now. You know, and yeah. I don't think she's off at all. I, I don't think her going two thirty in the two hundred fly doesn't matter to anyone here, right? Like, mm, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What about uh, what about Shane Cassis? When are we going to finally see Shane Cassis match? His talent because he he's a freak talent i mean this kid just went 50.8 in the 100 fly and in, in uh you know just some regular meat you know like that that's some real fast swimming like to me shane cassis is a super talented swimmer who hasn't yet reached his full potential do you know anything about him johnny um i have a swimmer who swims who sw i mean she swims now for texas a&m so he was there for a little bit and then moved to texas so she mm. told me about him mm. and i saw him first time at worlds in uh, abu dhabi there he was pretty good like yeah you could, you could see his talent and i thought he will be so much better in budapest and of course now in melbourne yeah but it seems like he's i don't know like staying in place kind of yeah, yeah, I don't you know. know. He's, good. he's good in in small meets like this. Like he's yeah. very good in small meets like this. Yeah, yeah. Fifty yeah. point eight is is pretty good for now. Yeah, Alex uh, thinks that he's still trying to find his groove. I mean, he's been yeah, there over a year now. I don't know if he's still trying to look for his groove. I think, I think Cassis is one of those guys that again is just super talented, does work hard, but just hasn't figured out how to be consistent at the big meets yet yeah. long course now short course he's done some stuff for sure but I, I don't know i've just got this expectation of him to be dominant long course like that's just my in my head am, am i wrong sonny i i completely agree and i just think there's so many questions he's got to ask himself in terms of what he swims like he goes 50 point every time he races 100 butterfly yeah. but he didn't race it a world short course he didn't race it at world long course he didn't race so he's never actually raced a hundred butterfly at any of the big meets he only races the backstroke events and then the thing with the backstroke events he went like 24-0 at trials last year like one of the fastest 50 backstrokers ever and didn't make the team because hunter and justin beat him so you know he's got this insane talent but yeah he, he's he's picking backstroke events where he's obviously got his pedigree and that's like you know, you, you think he's a backstroker, but then he's got this butterfly that's, wow, really good. And then he can do a 200, 200 medley. Like, he's a 155, I think. So yeah. he's just got to figure out what he wants to swim and then almost not put his eggs in the basket, but, you know, maybe he had a 100 fly at World Champs last year because Caleb didn't do it. And I think 50.11, he could have won that. 
but he didn't. And and it's it's kind of the thing. What does he swim? Right? Does he go in on the two IM, the one fly, the backstrokes where he won a long course medal, the, the backstrokes where he's been world champion short course? I don't know. Like, there we go. He's got a point zero two. His two hundred IM is point zero two off of Leon Marchand's best time. Like this guy's, a, he's seriously good long course. He's just yeah. he's got PBs from all around the year. Like he's got a PB from March, a PB from June, a PB from November. Like mm. he, he just and and Texas guys taper well, so maybe there is something with his head as well, where he needs to, you know, maybe he gets a little bit of nerves and pressure at the big meets as well. Yeah, I agree with you in terms of the the event schedule. He he seems to pull out of events where I'm like, oh, he's going to swim incredible here, and then he will pull out and swim some other random event. I'm like. What is going on? What's the what's happening in the conversations between him and Eddie and the decision making going on here? But um, yeah, it's confusing to me. But I just look again. I just think he's a super talent. I've had him on the show and I've talked to him. I think I think he's just uh, to me he was like the next big thing of like world domination, you know. But he's yeah. like he's that talented. But uh, just haven't seen it, you know, yet. So maybe maybe uh, maybe we'll get it in the next uh, few months, you know. So. Um, mm-hmm. One of the other things I wanted to mention to you, Johnny, is um, your boy, you know, your sprinter, did he expect, does does he now stand up on the block and expect to win? Does he expect to beat guys like Flo Manadu when he stands up next to them? Actually, before the Lausanne Swim Cup, we talked about it, and he thought he can. That was the first time he really thought he can. Because usually he would come and he would say, like, I don't belong here with them. Um, Even though he's been 21-7 already a few times. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah, he's not the level of them. He's not 21-4, 21-3, but he's 21-7 pretty consistently. So That's a good level. Yeah. So so now he's standing behind the blocks thinking that he belongs now. Yeah. And, like, the mental preparation going into Lausanne Swim Cup was – Basically, standing behind the block with Manadu, knowing that his start is much better and just focusing on himself. Because usually what he would do is just like speed up the stroke rate and then just stay in place. Right, right. And now you could see, I don't know if you watch the video, but he's like closing the gap, closing the gap. And he's just like in what you call like a clean speed situation. Like he's, he's very long and clean. Right. That's what we were trying to to work after nice. I talked to you a little bit about this. Nice. Now, why did he choose to go to Marseille and do a little bit of cross training there? Uh, because in Israel, basically, they don't support sprinting too much. Uh-huh. Like he's the only sprinter we have, and there is no real program for him, and not no budget. Like I coach him for free, basically. Um. And I'm the head coach of a club in Israel, so I don't have the time and resources to really deal with him all the time. So we try to find a place that will feed him and will help um, me, him, the, I don't know, like Israeli sprinting in the future. Right. And then David is good friends with, uh, with the coach there, with Julian and with Roman. He was in, uh, he swam for Auburn. Yeah. What's going on with Roman uh, uh, Banya? Is he still in Marseille? Yeah, yeah, he's the uh, like the director of the place. Oh, he's, so he doesn't, he's coaching he doesn't coach? a little bit. He's coaching a little bit, but he is. Julian is the the head coach now. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I haven't <clears throat> I haven't spoken to Romy in a long time. Need to get down with what's going yeah, on. Yeah, so, yeah. So how's a how does a man go from twenty one seven to twenty one three? We're, we've had this conversation a lot. What's the what's the next steps? Well, it's it's pretty hard, but I think the first step we took the first step, which is believing he can. Right. I mean, if he can beat these guys, even in smaller competitions, he can be at their level. I mean, right. I don't think he trains he trains different or is I don't know under less pressure than them. Or under I don't know like less practices than them, but he's still for me he's still not strong enough. Like he needs to to get stronger. Okay, so he's in the gym working on his strength. Yeah, he is. He is. He is. Yeah, and let's go to questions, Sonny. Let's open it up, mate. I'll let you take control of the questions here. I want to go to the audience. I want people to start putting this stuff in. Talk to us, Sonny. What's 
maybe I live under a rock, but I didn't know Ilya Karun was committed to ASU. I mean, that's just blown my mind. This is insane <laughs> well, news. He's got to commit somewhere, doesn't he? Well, if this is just such an exciting thing, right? Um, you know. My yeah, favorite... the best swimmers go to the best coaches, Sonny. That's the way it happens in America. No, I, I, I know that. I know that. I just didn't know we, we. This was, you know, information that was out there, and I'm super excited by that. Wow, what a combination! Um, well, is he going to Bob Bowman or is he going to uh, Herbie. to Herbie? Oh, he's a two fly. He's got to go to Bob Bowman. I mean, he can yeah. mix it up, can't he? I don't know. We're talking uh, about 49 watch here. It doesn't seem like a two fly time to me. It seems like a hundred fly time. Maybe he 149. Went, he went 51 8 on the weekend and won 54 4. His two flies better right now. That, 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 you know, he can do a bit of both. He's, 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 he's versatile. Uh, we don't know if uh, Summer's going to go to Junior Worlds. Um, she might, she might not. Um, hey, but listen, by the way, Sonny, I didn't mention this. Uh, uh, you know, jo Johnny actually uh, has now joined forces with us mm -hmm. on any question. He's on any question. Oh, wow. people, people can find Johnny on any question now. That's right. There we go. Mm -hmm. My microphone's having issues today. <laughs> Which YouTubers would you recommend for technical videos? Any any YouTube swimmer, swim, 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 swim YouTubers you recommend, guys? Oh. Not that I know of. Hello. You remember Someone. that Caleb Caleb used to do Caleb dissects or Dressel dissects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was I pretty good. Those. That was I pretty those. good. For, I'm, I'm yeah. not I'm not throwing hate here, but for the technical stuff, if you want like elite swimming technical stuff, then you've got to really get on any question. Um, mm -hmm. Agree. Because then you're going to get elite people talking to you. You can look on Instagram accounts from like more active coaches. So someone like James Gibson posts some brilliant technical stuff of work with Flow, Ben, stuff like that. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm super technical with what I upload, but you can see training of top swimmers. When you get to the more like how to swim freestyle videos, they're really for like, you know, triathletes and people mm. moving into swimming. They're not really going to cater for. But, you know, if you want to ask, you know, we've got a coach of a swimmer, one of the fastest swimmer in Israel history, Israeli history. He's yeah. on any questions. You can go and ask him stuff and he'll talk to you about technical freestyle. You can, you can ask Brett, you can ask, you know, the swimmers themselves, there's swimmers on there. So um, there we go. Well, already yeah, on there. Answered. There we yeah. go. So, I've actually been, question. yeah, I've been encouraging Johnny to do more of that, you know, filming, and then uh, doing some voiceovers on any question where he talks about what he's seeing and, Look, he's a technical coach. He's he's in, he's on the front lines, coaching some of the best athletes. And that's that's in what I did uh, this week with uh, Melanie, Hanik, and uh, Maron. They trained together, so I mm. took videos of them for Beautiful. any question of uh, on freestyle technique, technique, Beautiful. like uh, 50, 50 freestyle or hundred freestyle. <laughs> yes. Oh, there we hey, go. Matt. Matt Cross <laughs> is out there, loving it. Appreciate it. Thank Matt, you. I, co I coach till 10 p.m. tonight. I'm not getting any beers tonight, but this week <laughs> for sure, mate. Um, this week for sure, when I finish a little earlier, let's get a beer. Um, Perfect. Look, look, Faris is a good technical YouTuber. I, I, look, Faris is great. He's, my Swim Pro is great for what it is, but it's not elite swimming technical feedback. You know, he has no experience of elite swimming. He's great for people that are moving into, you know, wanting to get to like a one minute, 10, 100 freestyle or do triathletes. But he's, if, if you're trying to coach at a top level, he's not your go-to guy. And if you're trying to swim at the top, top level, that's not the sort of information you need, in my opinion. And he's a mate. I think he's got a great channel. Um, people love this sort of stuff. And while we've got a sprint coach on, you know, we do this every week pretty much. And we mm. can do our other weekly question in a second. But people love asking us this. If you had to bet on the 53 <laughs> podium in 2024, who have you got? Come on in. That's so hard. Mm, all right. All right. You, you go first. I'll, I'll go second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Letting me do the hard job. Um, for me, Ben Proud is the most impressive right now and the most right. consistent. All I right. think he will win. I think he wants to win. That's why he stays in swimming. I mean, mm -hmm. he's been fourth, what, two, two times or three times already? Two times, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
So I think this time he will win. We don't know the Caleb situation. We don't know if Caleb is coming back or not. Yeah, that's it. A lot of if you're just going off what we have right now, yeah, you've got to you've got to go with with Ben, right? Like it, just on on pure results from last year and leading into this mm -hmm. year. You know, Ben Proud is the hot hot hand. Uh, we are still a good eighteen months out, so it's like, look, there's a lot of time and and. Uh, that's that's a that's an eternity for a 50 freestyle to kind of you know do some stuff but yeah it's just there's so much up in the air with caleb it's it's hard to say yeah caleb's yeah. not going to be there when we just don't even know i would i would presume that caleb is going to be there that's what i'm saying like caleb's going to be there but so far he hasn't shown any of us that yet but i'm still running yeah. with that line um if i'm going to pick someone right now based on results i'm going to go with Ben, I'm going to go with Flo because Flo, listen, whatever you think of Flo or or where he is, and listen, he's he's finished first, second, second, second. yeah, uh, you know, at the last few Olympics. So uh, yeah, he's he's a money time guy. He knows how to yep. to be good at money time. Yeah. So and and, and I it's in I, I, I want to go with Michael Andrew to round up the podium. I think oh, it's like it. he will show up at the big meet because he's all he's also like Shane Cassis, like he swims fast all year round and then come come to the big meet and just underperforms. Usually. Uh I look uh, underperforms. I don't know about that. It's just it's not an underperformance. Perform, performs at the same level he did during the season. No, to me, like he he does some bit, he does some good swims, but he's just kind of inconsistently good. He's like all over the place sometimes. Like you don't you, you can't guarantee that Michael Andrews is going to swim a particular event and go and do what he's meant to do. Like it could yeah. be, it could surprise you. Man, I'm having, I'm yeah, having like serious microphone issues like today. Um, yeah, it's just inconsistently all over the place. He he'll. He'll pop a swim, and then the next swim he'll swim average, and you're like, just don't get him sometimes. But um, yeah, I mean, he's talented. I think what people yeah, forget with Michael Andrew is that, and they, they focus on the fact that he swam really well at Olympic trials, and then he swam a little bit slower at the Olympics. Mm. He was he'd never been an Olympian. That was his first time making an Olympic team, and he went all in for trials. How can you how can you knock that like? If yeah. he hadn't have gone all in for trials and doesn't make the team, we're having this conversation yeah, about true. someone who's not an Olympic swimmer, you know? And I, I, I think Michael Andrew has done so much so well. He's an Olympic champion in relays. He's an Olympic qualifier for the hardest team in the world to qualify for. He's a world champion short course. He's done ridiculous things like mm -hmm. qualified for a world championship final in every single stroke at the same meet, which is just bonkers. He made the 50 fly, 50 back, 50 breast, 50 free final at a world championship. Yeah. I'm so, this this guy has a resume like no other. And he's still, what, like 22? Like, I think he just gets flack for no apparent reason. And I, I, I don't know what he will get an individual medal in, but he's getting an, an individual medal at the Olympics next year. He is. It might be 100 breast. It might be that's what we want to see from him. But that's, that's exactly what, what I'm saying. Yeah, Johnny, we want to see that. But that's what I'm saying. You just don't know when it's going to come. Mm -hmm. Sonny, you're like, oh, he's going to get an individual medal. Yes, he is. I just don't know where it's going to come. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. In terms breasts, of the yeah, yeah so you just can't pinpoint when that one performance is going to come. Yeah. He'll pop something. Fucking hell. What's going on with my mic today, man? I don't know what's happening. Um, here's, here's, here's one for us. Look at this. Not many people know what this means, but the New South Wales State Open Championship. So Sydney is in the state of New South Wales, mm -hmm. uh, which used to be one of the most dominant swimming states in Australia when I was around. Um, not, not so much anymore, but um, it, it's happening this weekend. Fucking microphone. I'm going to kill this thing. I don't know why it's just turning off on me. It's acting super weird, but... Um, Yes, the New South Wales State Open, and it's going to happen. It usually happens at Homebush, which is where the Olympics was uh, in Sydney, two thousand. So, sensational pool. It sounds like they're lining up there this weekend for some for some good swimming. You know, 
who who will we get at that meet? Who's the main Sydney based NCW and well, based people? It's not a Sydney based thing. Well, maybe I think the way they do it is yes, it's an open championship, so anyone can come and swim it, right? Okay. So like, so okay. they'll have like you know they'll give out the best swimmer in New South Wales will win the gold medal, and then they'll have an open field where they'll give that person a gold medal if they swim the best time type thing. So it's it's one of those ones where it's um open to kind of anyone come and swim. So yeah, we could have a bunch of Queensland swimmers come down, which would be pretty nice. And uh, someone, someone says swim. Kate Campbell is coming back, swimming her first meet. Whoa, yeah. yeah, that's big news. That's real big news. Really yeah. exciting. She's uh, yeah, she she's a yeah. stud, right? Her and Sarah just absolute domination of this sport. You know, Kate Campbell won an Olympic medal in two thousand eight. Put that into perspective. Fifteen years ago, Kate Campbell won an Olympic medal. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, she she's been around forever. Unbelievable. Um, but again, ne never won the big one individually, right? No, 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 no. Um, oh, yeah, it's it's just crazy though, isn't it? Like how hard the sport is. In two thousand eight, yeah. she got the bronze medal in the fifty three. That's how. And she got a bronze medal in Tokyo in the 100 free. She has two individual Olympic medals, 08 and 2021. Yeah, um, th 13 years apart. Crazy. Yeah, yeah again, uh, I put her in the same category as Shane Cassis in a way, like just a unbelievable physical specimen talent who is just – like when I look at Kate Campbell, I'm like, no one will beat her. No one will beat her. And yet – She's never won the big one. And it's just always just stunned me. Like, I think so highly of her. And I'm not saying that she's had a failure of a career in, in any sense. It's just in my mind, I just see her as the most dominant sprinter in the field. I was like, look at that woman. There's no way anyone's going to beat her, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, yeah. and then something happens and she just never gets her hand on the wall to win. I, I remember the year that Bronte won the world title and it was kind of like, yeah, Bronte must hate life. She's like the slightly slower sister of Kate Campbell. And then she wins a world title. And I'm like, how? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, good for Bronte. And, and it's funny because Bronte clearly has the the mental resilience to be a winner, mm -hmm. whereas Kate has the talent in abundance. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just imagine Bronte's mentality with Kate's ability. And I'm not taking away from either of their ability because Bronte's clearly a talented swimmer herself. But yeah. Yeah, um, just two different physical specimens, though. Same, same, same mother and father, but they're they're built completely different. You know, Kate yeah. Campbell is just you know she's got the height and the length and the she's got she got everything you would imagine, and she's got the technique. Her tech. When I see Kate Campbell swim, I'm like, wow. I mean, it just it takes your breath away how beautiful her technique is. You know. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I've seen this guy ask this question a few times. It's uh, not super specific for you guys, but you can give a thought. Basically, in the UK, we have the National Summer like, Age Group Championships, and they invite the top 24 swimmers to that meet. So you have like three months to qualify, and the top 24 swimmers in that time get invited. And basically, they've got rid of the 50-meter events for 16 and unders. And if you're 16, 17, and 18, you can only qualify for the 50 on your 100 times. And then once you're 19 plus, you can qualify for the 50s outright. So basically, I mean, I think we all probably have the same opinion. It's absolutely stupid that they're getting rid of 50 meter events for 16 unders. And I think yeah. such an issue in this sport is that we don't let sprinters sprint. And I think, you know, that that's a massive thing. If you want to be a sprinter, why not be a sprinter? And why take away the ability to be a national level swimmer because you're good at fifties. But that's my opinion. I just wanted to answer it quickly. Guys. That that's also the the problem, I mean, in Israel. They let people sprint, but they always treat the sprinters as, you know, second best. Like you have to do the four hundred IM when you're fifteen in order to be good uh, in fifty freestyle when you're twenty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a worldwide mentality, Johnny. This is the problem. Yeah. This is the worldwide mentality. Listen when uh i could i could tell you multiple stories back when i was sprinting just the 50 i got i got looked on as a second class second rate swimmer you know of like somebody that was just there for uh, just there to have fun you know and i i was always saying like listen they're they're giving a gold medal 
like any other event. You know, this is this is an Olympic gold medal that they're giving out. Why wouldn't you take it seriously uh, and focus your time and attention on that? Now, in saying that, the other 50s are not at the Olympics, and I've 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 even talked to uh, you know multiple people about how this could change right in the future. Um, but it doesn't seem to be budging. It doesn't seem like the, the 50s are going to be put on the Olympics anytime soon. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd love it to happen. I think you'd see a drastic change in the way that people started to train and um, focus on sprinting. I agree. Yeah. At the end, I quit because my 100 was not good enough. But if there was a 50 in the Olympics, like I was a 50 backstroker, I would still sw still be swimming, I think, until this day. What was your best time, Johnny? Twenty four sixty. Damn, Sonny, that's pretty good, dude. Twenty four sixty. Very good. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. quick, man. That's quick. What's yeah. the secret to a fast fifty backstroke? What? What? What's the? Uh, for me, it was stroke rate. Stroke rate. Stroke rate. Like I, my model was Liam Tancock. So. Yeah. I was okay. trying to mimic him. So you're just sitting back, you're sitting back in the vessel and you're just trying to swing your arms as, as quick as you can? Yeah, like 64, 62 stroke rate all the way, wow. just holding. Wow. How do you, what, what do you do when you're trying to keep that cadence? You know, you get to like the 35 meter mark and obviously it's very difficult to keep that type of cadence. What are you doing mentally? There I try to squeeze my core a little bit and then it helps me to stay up like if you if you drop in backstroke you, you you're done uh, that's okay. it you have to to keep your hips up otherwise you're sitting up so you start to feel the fatigue and so you start to then focus in on the core at that point in time yeah that was my problem in uh, budapest 2017 i was pretty much with uh leading the field at 35 and then just you know, kind of like trying to spin more, right? Trying to win, thinking about winning. Yeah, and that's it. Hey, listen, I've been there, man. I know it. Sydney, two thousand. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me. Don't worry about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, been there. There's a lot, there's a lot, lot of lessons in that for sprinters, though, and I, I think that's where we need to share those lessons so that people don't keep making the same mistake, right? This is this is yeah. this is sprint coaching. You know, this is how we figure out how to get people to be better. That's right. Um, uh, what's this 400 IM? Do you think she's going to go 400 IM at the Olympics? No, I don't think that at all. Does anyone else? Nope. I think nope. it's on the same day as the 400. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's not going to happen. That's yeah. not happening. What's this one here? Which race are you looking forward to at NCAs? Jordan, Jordan Crooks, Brooks Curry, Josh Leander, Bjorn Seliger in the 100 free. Or Leon Carson Hugo four hundred. I mean, both both of those both of those races are going to be uh, epic epic yeah, races for sure. Yeah, I, I I'm kind of leaning into this four I am. I think Carson's going to just do something absolutely unreal here. I just mm. I don't know. I, I'm just mm. I'm not I'm not writing off Leon. Leon is going to be faster than he has ever been before, and it's going to be quicker than four thirty one. But Carson is just a huge talent, and I just – what him and Eddie are cooking, I think is going to be good, and I think it's going to be a close race. I'm not going to call a winner. Mm, oh, we yeah. will on another show, but uh, – <laughs> Yeah, we will. We will. So oh. next week, next week we're going to be calling – so the women's NCAA starts, starts kind of like a week from today, right? So yeah. like uh, next week, the women's mm -hmm, NCAA. Yeah. So, okay, so – so what we'll do next Monday is we'll have a prediction show. We'll do a, a women's prediction show. And so everybody in the comments, make sure you go through the list and let's start throwing out some predictions on the women's event next week. We're not going to focus on the men. We'll do women next week. And then the following week, we'll do our men's prediction show. So everybody go through the list of NCAA events. Let's uh, figure out what everybody's picks are for next week on the women's side only. Okay. We're only going to be talking women next week. Okay. Um, yeah, some interesting stuff, but, but right now, yes, that, uh, I don't know, Carson, Carson's sitting there. Ob it's obviously Leon's had some rest throughout the season and, and he's a talent. We know that, but Carson is just sitting there in the wings. Um, Hugo, I think can, can get more rest as well. So it's like, yeah, I think that that's going to be an epic swim. And look, you know, B Bjorn is not fully rested. I think he went 40.9 on the weekend and, you know, not fully rest. I mean, 
all these guys they can all swim it's going to be epic yeah that's good that's going to be one of the greatest swims uh races in history with those guys in the 100 free maybe in, sure. even even the 50 free you know there's going to be mm-hmm. some i think we can get a couple of guys under 18 sunny it could be the first time in history we get more than one oh, person in a single race under under 18 I don't know that Josh Liendo well, but what I do know from everything he's done in previous seasons is he drops big at the main meet. He's mm-hmm. got a lot more in store for us, mm-hmm. um, you know. And I think Brooks. I don't think Brooks was off at, LS, um, at SECs. I think Brooks was just not rested as well. No, Brooks is no. a crazy talent as well. So yeah, yeah. Brooks um, Brooks wasn't rested. Yeah, and, and, and LSU aren't looking for a conference title or anything. No. So why why would he he'd have no pressure to be on it at SECs in any no. way? No. So no. Um, yeah, and I'm sure there's going to be one other guy that's not mentioned there that that's in the mix as well. You know, because there always is. Yeah, someone will pop something. Yeah. Maybe not in the four AM. Maybe maybe it's those three guys. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the, uh, yeah, in the four AM for sure. But uh, yeah. Well, what about a question here for you, Sonny? What's this one? Uh, how did I approach going PRs in your twenties with le- way less training? Um, I mean, first of all, my PRs weren't very competitive. So, like, you know, you've got there's three of us here, but these two guys have swum at the highest level, and they both PB'd in their twenties. So they're you know. But they done it as full time athletes, I guess. Whereas I did a PB in the hundred freestyle long course when I was thirty one. How about that? Oh, there we go. Like, so I mean, you've asked two questions, Matt, Matthew. You've asked about PRs as a master swimmer, but I don't think training quantity in terms of volume and how many hours you spend in a pool is irrelevant, especially if you're doing sprint events. And I think age is as as relevant as the effort you're putting in and the shape you're in. You know. And if I don't know how old you are, if you're in your 20s and you want to swim PRs, you know, you can still care about stuff that you do every day, like your diet. Um, but just go and work hard and and up the volume of of sprinting and not the volume of meters. So you can swim three times a week and you can just go and hit like three fast sessions, go to the gym a couple of times and you can swim PRs um, for sure. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but there's. You know, twenties is not twenties. You should be swimming PBs as a swimmer, yeah, full right. time or not. Like, if you're, especially if you're a guy, if you can't go quicker than you were when you were sixteen as an adult male, even on slightly less training, then something's not right. And if you do want training plans, I I sell them on my website www.theswimsuitguy.co.uk. So Matthew, if you want help getting PBs, hit me mm-hmm. up and uh, we can work towards that. Training plans for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's a question yeah. tips for the hundred free we're all on any question go over there there's ton, tons of tips on any question over there but here's here's a tip for you understand the control of your speed because it's about speed control so let's let's just imagine that we're talking about two laps here up and back it's about speed control so how how much control do you have on the way out and then how much can you give on the way back and so that balance between what you're exerting on the front end and what you got left on the back end and that's the that's the fine balance that every single 100 freestyle is dealing with right so when you talk about popovich he's trying to figure out how far can i push my front end so that i still leave myself enough on that back end where i can come back in 24 flat carl chalmers is thinking carl chalmers is thinking the same thing right and so any 100 freestyle i'd imagine is thinking the balance between the front end and the back end uh johnny what do you think yeah, I totally agree with you. If you go out too fast, that's the problem with the 50 freestylers. They don't, they can't control their speed going out and then they just die at the end. Yeah, yeah. And, and is your boy training primarily just for the 50 or is he yeah, for the Yeah, primarily 100? for the 50. He's trying to do the 100 just to qualify for the relays, but our relays are not very competitive, so it doesn't really matter. So when... When you say trying, what does that mean? Is he putting any emphasis into his training for the hundred free? Um, not really. He does so, a set. So he's for not a, really trying. No, he's the, he does a set for the hundred free once every two weeks or something, and he's going to compete hundred free in almost every meet he he does. Okay, and so what would you say a set for the hundred free once every two weeks would look like? Um, for him, he usually does a broken hundred free with a pretty decent amount of rest. 
So just one in the practice or multiple? Uh, maybe like three in the practice, but with I like on a minute thirty. Okay, so he'd, so he'd go, he'd do a fifty, and then he'd rest. Yeah, know, a minute type sometimes, thing. Sometimes with fins. Okay. To okay. feel the the speed, uh, but primarily for the fifty and primarily this distance per stroke. That's what he we're trying to to do now. Right. Okay. Um, if you want some, if you want some hundred speed workouts, Sonny's got them all. If if yeah. anyone is on this listening here and they want to, they want real hundred speed workouts. Sonny's got a lot of them, and uh, and he's he's got them available on his website. So yeah, I would definitely hook up with him on that for sure. Uh, what does this mean? What's that mean? Well, someone asked, what does PB stand for? As English uh. is not their first matter language. <laughs> And um, Tim did say PB is is peanut yeah. butter, which I think is a very American thing. Um, yeah, yeah, PB and J, yeah, P peanut butter and jelly, yeah. yeah. Obviously, in swim and talk, personal best, your fastest time, PB, PR, personal record, um, is, is yeah. what we're talking about. Um, so I think we're I think we're coming to the end here. Has anyone got any other serious questions before we wrap up? Uh, Johnny, tell us what's next uh, in the future. You just got back from Marseille. You're back in Israel. What's happening in the next few weeks, few months? Um, I'm going on training camp in Greece with Maron and a couple of uh, other teammates from my club. Damn. We're going to train a little bit maybe with Christian Golomev. Damn. Okay. Johnny, you married or anything? Yeah. You I married? Have to pick up my kid in seven minutes from kindergarten. You got you got a, a little uh, boy or girl? A boy and a girl. Boy a is uh, three years old and the girl three months old. So the, you just bring up a good point though. Swim coaching is tough, right? You, you got to do all these training camps and you got to disappear and leave yeah, the family. How do you how do you find? Um, it, it's not a 50-50 balance by any means, but how do you find balance when you're at home? I'm trying to compensate when I'm at home, like taking uh, my wife and my kids, yeah. you know, like on vacations or, yeah. you know, take two days off just to right. to relax my mind and, you know, be with the family. So, so when you're home, fun. when you're home, you're home, like you, you try trying, and you try I'm and give them. To. Yeah. I, I learned from you, like uh, from your experiences when you said you, you um, have to uh, pick up like, put your phone down and not answer mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. It's hard for me, but I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult. It's, uh, it's, it's something that we don't talk about often, which is why I'm bringing it up now. It's, it's important. Look, you've got two young kids, you've got a wife, you're talking about traveling the world and getting people on podiums and things. So your focus is, Oh yeah, I want my career to take off. I want my athletes to swim fast. And yet at the same time, you're a husband, you're a father, and I would yeah. never want you to lose focus on that. So I'm always going to bring bring the focus back to you. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to balance the two, the two things. Good job, man. Keep it up. Thank all right. You. Uh, put Thank put you. your emphasis there when you're at home. Honestly, uh, I think um, your right. wife and kids will will appreciate it. All right, uh, Sonny, what's going on for you? Nothing much. You got a competition over in the UK this weekend, and there's a uh, Edinburgh International. Um, uh, quite a few people are swimming that. I just wanted to quickly mention Erica Fairweather in New Zealand. Really, really fast. Four minute point four hundred freestyle this weekend. We didn't touch upon it, but I feel like it deserved a mention. So New Zealand girl, huh? Did that did that come from nowhere or has she been kind of around that mark for a while? Uh, I think she's good, but not that good. Um Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's Sorry. Johnny. Sorry, guys. But yeah. What about you, Brett? What's your plan this week? What's going on? Mate, that's a good question. I appreciate you asking me. I don't know. I just uh, I look at my calendar and I've, I've got a, a long list of um, calls to make to bring on new experts for any question. I'm doing a uh, live show this afternoon with Grant House. We're, we're going to go live from ASU. So everybody check that out. It'll be me and Grant House. Wednesday, I'm actually going to do uh, I'm going to do a special um, show as well. I'm going to put in another one. Uh, Matt Credit and I are going to come mm -hmm. on together and um, head coach of uh, the Tennessee Vols and a um, lot to talk about with, with his athletes and his teams. The, the men and women have both got some special athletes. So Credit and I are going to go live, I think, um, 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. You guys can come in and ask Matt Credit questions. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to throw some live shows in. There's a lot of swimming coming up, obviously, with NCAAs and all these long course meets and these European meets. And so 
yeah, I think it's time we, we kind of just throw some more live shows in and just, um, just talk, you know? So, um, one yeah. last one last question here from Eric. How's life transition to Boston? I love Boston. It's great. It's got a look. It's it's a big city with a small city feel. It does it does feel small when you're in it, you know. But like it's a it's a big city, and, and there's a lot to do. Great food, great sports, great people. I've never had any instance where it ha anyone hasn't been nice. Like really good people everywhere you go. People are friendly. Uh, it's cold right now. It's been well. They tell me it's not as cold as it has been, but um, it's chilly. But I'm looking forward to the spring, so that's coming. Um, so I appreciate it, Eric. Yeah, and thanks for being a supporter of any question. Eric's a, a huge supporter. He's always in there. He's um, asking questions. He's using the platform. So listen, guys, I appreciate you guys as well supporting it and doing what we're doing. Thanks for being here, Johnny. You're Thank awesome. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Yep um good luck with everything and then we'll we'll touch base we'll, we'll we'll jump in when we can and sunny i'll see you next week for the uh show where we're going to do our predictions on the women all right looking forward to it cheers guys cheers for okay watching. guys take care see you man see you